I'm Robert Paganelli. I'm the director of radiology at Duke Regional Hospital. I'm going to be speaking about Tech 99M PYP imaging for cardiac amyloidosis. At the conclusion of the presentation, April Mann, a colleague from Hartford Hospital, will be joining for a question and answer session. Learning objectives are to provide information about cardiac amyloidosis, to review the use of Tech 99M PYP imaging for cardiac amyloidosis to describe the preparation and administration techniques for Tech 99 and PYP, and to describe imaging acquisition parameters. Finally, to describe imaging processing for the two types of interpre interpretations, quantitative and semi-quantitative. Cardiac amyloid is one of several varied causes of heart failure. Cardiac amyloidosis is a life-threatening infiltrative cardiac myopathy that is commonly a cause of heart failure characterized by extracellular deposition of misfolded protein, which forms amyloid fibrils that deposit in the heart. Cardiac amyloidosis is underrecognized. There is a fragmented knowledge about the disease. There are misconceptions around diagnosis and previously insufficiently sensitive tests, all contributing to reasons for misdiagnosis. There are two main types of cardiac amyloidosis, AL amyloidosis or light chain amyloidosis and transthyretin amyloid, abbreviated by ATTR. Those two types account for greater than 95% of all cardiac amyloid diagnosis. AL amyloidosis is a plasma cell dyscrasia. Monoclonal plasma cells overproduce immunoglobulin light chain fragments which misfold into form amyloid fibrils. There are 3,000 plus new cases per year in the United States, and these generally present in those age greater than 50 years of age. The median survival of untreated patients with AL amyloidosis who present with heart failure is less than six months. Switching to ATTR cardiac amyloidosis, or abbreviated ATTR, uh, Transthyretin is produced in the liver. Uh, these generally disassociate, misfold, develop amyloid fibrils, which deposit in various tissues throughout the body. ATTR cardiomyopathy is a life-threatening, underrecognized, and underdiagnosed disease. However, the prognosis is not as grave as that is AL amyloidosis. There are two types of ATTR amyloidosis. There is wild type and hereditary type. Cardiac amyloid patients um, have several effects uh, on their hearts, including stiff myocardium, loss of myocardial contractility, heart rhythm abnormalities, and decrease in blood flow. Patients present with symptoms of shortness of breath, irregular heartbeats, feet and ankle edema, and overall weakness, fatigue, and nausea, so generally heart failure symptoms. There are several tests that patients have uh, to assist in the diagnosis. This includes blood work, EKG, cardiac MRIs, echocardiograms, biopsies, and finally the Tech 99 m PYP scan, which we'll focus on. As you know, Tech 99 m PYP imaging was previously used for bone scan imaging and for infarct imaging. Um, you can see below a scan that is normal for cardiac amyloid. In other words, there is no cardiac uptake. And on the right side of the screen, the CINE demonstrates an abnormal scan showing uh, extensive uptake in the myocardium. And on the right side, the abnormal scan that is processed using uh, processing like we would use for myocardial perfusion imaging, uh, again, showing uptake throughout the myocardium and that is diagnostic for ATTR amyloidosis. These doses are prepared generally by radiopharmacies, but want to review the process of making up a Tech 99 m PYP kit. These cold PYP vials are refrigerated and should be brought to room temperature for approximately five minutes. Package insert suggests adding 100 millicuries of Tech 99 m to the vial, with that being QS to 4 mLs, giving a final concentration of 100 millicuries in 4 mLs. This is added to the PYP reaction vial it is inverted several times to reconstitute and should be let to sit for five minutes prior to administering the dose. 
The ASNIC practice points uh, for cardiac amyloidosis recommends imaging uh, parameters. Uh, in general, we are going to acquire a 750K anterior chest projection that will be used for quantification, and then a 360-degree SPECT acquisition uh, that's used for evaluation as well. This anterior chest projection acquired for 750K counts uh, is used for the quantification uh, or the quantitative evaluation. The myocardial region of interest is drawn and that region of interest should be copied and pasted or mirrored on the other side of the chest to assure that it is the exact same size. That contralateral region of interest is placed on the opposite side of the chest. We take the mean counts in that cardiac region of interest and divide it by the mean counts in the contralateral lung region of interest to come up with a ratio that is used for diagnosis. In this particular patient, that ratio is 1.05 and a ratio of 1.5 or greater is suggestive of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis, so this is a normal scan. A little bit more about the processing, again, that circular region of interest is placed over the heart, a contralateral region of interest is drawn of the same size, and the mean counts in the cardiac region of interest are divided by the mean counts in the contralateral region of interest. Again, a ratio of 1.5 or greater is suggestive of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis. In placing these regions of interest, we need to be careful not to place over the sternum as it is very hot generally, and also any ribs specifically with pathology that would be abnormally hot, and also need to be careful not to place the contralateral region of interest over the dome of the liver. As far as processing, um, it is often performed with myocardial perfusion processing or suggested that we perform this with myocardial perfusion processing if the ratio is 1.5 or greater as there will be significant uptake in the myocardium. If the ratio is less than 1.5, it may be better off to process that with general spec processing as we do in our labs as there is minimal cardiac activity and processing as more a general chest spec or a bone spec is more appropriate. This information is taken from the ASNEC practice points showing the semi-quantitative visual grading of the tech 99 m PYP scan. A grade of zero is no uptake in the myocardium and normal rib uptake. Grade one is uptake in the heart, which is less than the rib uptake. Grade two is uptake equal to rib uptake. And then finally, grade three is uptake greater than rib uptake. Again, at the bottom of the screen, you can see one that is positive for uptake in the myocardium, and it's significantly hotter uh, than the ribs. This slide shows the semi-quantitative visual scoring for both planar and SPECT imaging. So the top row shows, obviously, anterior chest project projections uh, on the left side, one with no uptake, all the way over to the right side where you see a grade three uptake, and again, the corresponding images uh, for the SPECT studies below. I want to go through several cases from our facility. The first one is a 93-year-old female who presented to the emergency room with increased shortness of breath, lower extremity edema. The EKG demonstrated left bundle branch block. It was unknown if that was an old or new finding. The echocardiogram showed moderate LV dysfunction with moderate left ventricular hypertrophy and an ejection fraction of 32%. The next step in the patient's management was to order a tech 99 m PYP scan. In this anterior chest projection, you can see the uh, cardiac region of interest drawn, also the contralateral region of interest. The ratio was 1.0, which is inconclusive for cardiac amyloidosis. The SPECT was processed as a general scan as there was little or no cardiac uptake, um, showing the um, coronal projections first in black and white and in Keller, and the transaxial slices in black and white and in Keller, and then finally the sagittal cuts in both black and white and Keller. All of these slices show uptake in the bone, but very little cardiac uptake. Note that it is also no normal to see the kidneys as the PYP is cleared from the body uh, through the kidneys. The second case is a 70-year-old male with a long history of atrial fibrillation. 
patient had two ablations and now on sodalol morphine. The patient was having an increase in dyspnea and had an echocardiogram that revealed congestive heart failure with an ejection fraction between 45 and 50 percent. The cardiac MRI showed diffuse myocardial enhancement consistent with an infiltrative disorder, and they were referred to Duke and underwent a tech 99 m PYP scan. The scan was positive for ATTR cardiac amyloidosis with a ratio of 2.1. Here is the SPEC study processed using myocardial perfusion reconstruction software. You can see um, adequate amount of PYP taken up throughout the myocardium. The third case is a 75-year-old male with a history of diastolic heart failure for the past two years. He noticed swelling in his arms and legs and shortness of breath. The patient has a history of peripheral neuropathy with numbness in the fingers and carpal tunnel. The cardiac MRI showed left ventricular hypertrophy was, was out of proportion to his mild hypertension. It also showed enhancement of the myocardium that was concerning for cardiac amyloid. The patient was referred to Duke for an evaluation and management of cardiac amyloidosis. The patient had a tech 99 m PYP scan and a biopsy. This slide shows the patient's electrocardiogram that shows low voltage in the limb leads that is often present in patients with cardiac amyloidosis. The patient had a positive scan for cardiac ATTR amyloidosis, uh, a ratio of 1.66, again above that 1.5 limit that is suggestive of ATTR cardiac amyloid. Here is the uh, SPEC scan that is processed with the um, myocardial perfusion reconstruction software. You can see uptake throughout the left ventricle and in the right ventricle as well. The size and placement of the region of interest is very important, as I stressed earlier. This original processing shows a ratio of 1.18. Upon further review, it looks like the region of interest for the cardiac is just a little bit large, and on the contralateral side of the chest, the region of interest is over top the liver. Following reprocessing, which included making the cardiac region of interest smaller and moving the contralateral region of interest higher in the patient's thorax, the ratio was 1.5 now suggestive of a TTR cardiac amyloid. The ASNIC practice points suggest billing codes for this procedure. The tumor localization or distribution of a radiopharmaceutical spec is CPT code 78803. And tumor localization or distribution of a radiopharmaceutical limited is 78800. In summary, cardiac amyloidosis is an underdiagnosed cause of heart failure. Tech 99 m PYP imaging plays an important role in the non-invasive diagnosis of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis. The size and placement of the region of interest is critical. Inspect imaging allows the evaluation of residual blood pool activity. Thank you, Robert, for that very informative presentation. In listening, one of the first things I thought about was, can you explain how uh, ease of use of this procedure for our patients and what the standard patient preparation would be? Sure, um, very simple. There is no uh, particular patient prep for this. Patients can eat right up until the exam time. They can be injected for the uh, uh, study, leave and go eat and come back during the hour wait. So it's actually very simple for patients to tolerate. One thing to keep in mind is many of these cardiac amyloid patients have spinal stenosis, so it may be difficult for them to lay still for the SPEC study, uh, but other than that, it's very well tolerated. In your presentation, you mentioned that imaging should be somewhere between one and three hours. Can you speak to the advantages or when we would consider doing mm -hmm. a one hour as opposed to a three hour scan? I think it's become standard for most labs to perform the imaging at one hour, uh, being that this is being used for cardiac amyloid. You know, a lot of people want to lead toward that three because it's a bone imaging agent and that's more the standard for bone scans. Uh, but remember, these patients may have kidney uh, disease as well, and that may uh, um, allow a lot of blood pool activity to be there. But really, I think one hour has become the standard where delaying to three hours may be appropriate in patients where we see a lot of blood pool activity at one hour. 
And again, referring to imaging technique, you had spoke about with a ratio of 1.5 performing a bone spect as opposed to an MPI spect. Can you speak to the importance of that and what the, the thought process is? Absolutely. You know, it works very well when there's cardiac uptake to use the myocardial perfusion reconstruction software that we're all used to using. Uh, it becomes very challenging if there's little or no cardiac um, uh, uptake to be able to, to do that processing. There's really nothing to orient around and it can become very difficult. But um, uh, so it's become standard in our lab if there is not significant, car significant cardiac uptake to use the bone or general SPECT processing. Given that information, given who our audience is, if there's somebody who's a general cardiology practice that may have just uh, cardiology specific imaging equipment, is there any questions they would have to ask in order to ensure they can do this procedure properly? They would just want to assure that they have general SPECT processing as well as the myocardial perfusion processing software on their systems. But I believe in most cases um, that would be present on conventional SPECT systems. And what about those practices that have solid state equipment? What are the concerns or uh, things they would need to think about? It is a concern at this time. You know, being that those systems do not do planar imaging, uh, it leaves us without the ability to do the quantification. Uh, there are some things being worked on with those vendors, but at this point, uh, they should not be performed on those systems. And finally, in your experience, what do you think the biggest opportunity to introduce error or things we should really consider that could not give us a, a definitive diagnosis in our patients? Clearly the region of interest. Uh, making sure that those are placed appropriately, they're of the right size, uh, can definitely introduce error. So a lot of care ought to be taken by both the technologists performing the studies, the physicians doing the interpretation to make sure that that's right. Well, thank you, Robert, for that very informative presentation today. I'm sure our audience will get a lot of useful information. It's always good to hear about a new procedure or a new twist on something that we've been doing for many years now. I agree. Thank you very much as well.